University. So he will speak on Stokes phenomena and quantum Ginsburg Weinstein linearization. Uh, first of all, sorry, uh, for me to uh, to chair, I need to watch out for what for the chat for questions or nothing. Nothing. Uh, right? Oh, you you you, you know the um, word. You do what you want. <laughs> all <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, so Xiaomeng, please start. Thank you. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, thanks for the introduction. And, uh, you know, it's my great pleasure to be here, you know, to give a talk in Global Poisson. And uh, my talk is about the Stokes phenomenon and uh, Poisson geometry and the quantum groups. So my talk has three parts. So in the very beginning, I'm going to give a general introduction to the Stokes phenomenon. Roughly speaking, it studies the properties of complex functions around essential poles. For example, if we, if we take the function exponential one over Z, we know that it has different behaviors when Z goes to zero from left or from the right half planes. It, have, it has different asymptotics for any complex functions at the in central pole. And uh, this phenomenon normally happens to the functions which arise as a solutions of ODEs with irregular singularities. So in the second part, I'm gonna give a introduction to ODEs and their Stokes matrices. And in the end, I'm gonna relate, you know, in the past 20 years, this Stokes phenomenon, quite classical stuff, has been found to be you know, useful in many subjects like in Gromovatan theories or in symplectic geometries and so on. So in this talk, I'm gonna give a relation between Stokes phenomena and quantum groups. And all my work uh, was motivated by the remarkable theorem of Ginsburg and Weinstein, which states that for any compact Lie group, the dual Poisson group is diffeomorphism to its linearization. I'm gonna give an introduction to this theorem later on. So this is an outline of my talk. So first, let's see what, what is Stokes phenomenon. So for that, let's consider a linear system defined on the complex plane. So this is an N by N system where the solution is valued in an N by N matrix what I call Fz. And here I, I use I to denote the square root of minus one. And U is a diagonal matrix with real diagonal entrance. And I assume this residual matrix A. Sorry, it's I assume A is an arbitrary matrix. So here this GUN denotes a set of matrices. And then so if we look at this system, the coefficient has a second of the pole when z equals to zero. Therefore, from, from the classical theory of ODEs, we know that any solution of this system has a has an essential pole at z equal to zero. For example, any fundamental solution of this system, if you if you take any fundamental solution, it's gonna have it's gonna have the following asymptotics. That is, if we take, so here this bracket A takes a diagonal part of matrix A. Therefore, this is a, this is a matrix valued function, it's a multi-valued. So if we take the multiplication of this matrix function with our solution Fz, so we're gonna, we're gonna find that, or in other words, this is a so-called regularized limit. So we, we're, gonna, we're gonna see that the regularized limit of any solutions have different limits as z go to zero from left or right half planes. So where t plus and t minus are two invertible matrices. So it happens to any fundamental solution. So it's a quite a general phenomenon. In the next slides, I'm gonna give a two by two example from where one can see how exactly it works in explicit terms. So this is so this is a so-called Stokes phenomenon. 
So here our test function is FZ, any solution of our system. And we see that it has different asymptotic behaviors in different, you know, uh, from different directions to zero, to z equal to zero. Now we want to measure this sort of jump phenomenon of asymptotics. For that, what we, own, what we need to do is to introduce the ratio of these two, you know, asymptotics t minus and t plus. In other words, we can define the so-called Stokes matrices, matrix as the ratio of these two asymptotics t plus and t minus inverse. So basically here we take the difference of this uh, limits in left and half planes. It measures the difference of the asymptotics. So this is a so-called Stokes matrix S plus. And similarly, we can define S minus. So in total, any linear system with this form has two Stokes matrices. One is S plus, one is S minus. So note that our linear system depends on the choice of diagonal matrix U and, uh, and uh, matrix A. Therefore, the Stokes matrices S plus, S minus will depend on U and A. So this is a, so in other words, Stokes matrices measure the jump phenomenon of the solution FZ, uh, of, of the asymptotics of the solution FZ at the essential pole. So let's see an, let's see an example in the two by two case, how things works. So in this case, we are end of such a linear system. So to write down, so recall that we want to, we want, if we want to write down the Stokes matrices, first we should write down a fundamental solution. For that, we need the, the so-called Kummer function. So this is, the Kummer function is an entire function of Z, which depends on another two parameters, alpha and beta. So here I gave the definition in terms of power series where this alpha power of n is defined as a multiplication of alpha up to alpha plus n minus one. So this is a standard notation. Therefore, if we look at this power series, we will find out it is an entire function, except that z equals to zero is an essential pole, right? If beta is not a negative integer, then this is an entire function, except z equal to zero. One can actually think of this Kummer function as a deformation of the exponential one over z function, right? Because if there is no alpha and beta terms, this is simply exponential one over z. And using this function, one can easily write down a fundamental solution for our two by two system, which takes the following form. So here, if we look at this solution, so this is a two by two matrix, each entry is given by Kummer function with multiplication with some exponential term and some polynomial term. Where the arguments of Kummer function alpha and beta depends on, you know, depends on uh, two eigenvalues of residue matrix. So here is A, recall that I use, I always use A to denote the, the residue matrix. So basically A is T1, B2, B1, T2. So lambda, lambda, lambda one, lambda two are two eigenvalues of A. And the T1 is the first entry of A. And one can plug in this expression and verify this is indeed a fundamental solution for our system. And now we so want Shama, to check. Shama, I, I'm just curious that what happens to the I, the square root of minus one? Uh, you put it there. Yeah, and probably then... I forgot to write. Yeah, probably I forgot to write I. It should be here. Oh, oh, it should yeah. be there. Okay. Sorry, yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I put this I just for some, for convenience. I mean, for some reason. Later on, I, I may give a reason later on. Yeah. So this is a pretty uh, direct. One can, one can verify it. And now we want to, and now if you look at this solution, it has, a, we know that it has a, essential pole at z equal to zero, right? Because Kummer function has an essential pole. And then we want to check, we want to compute what the uh, asymptotics of this fundamental solution look like. For that, we only, for that we need to use the asymptotics of Kummer function. So recall that 
I said Kuruma function looks like an exponential one over z function, right? And for the one over z function, we know that in left and right half planes, it has it has different behaviors. So does Kuruma function. Actually, we can see that when z goes to zero from the left half plane, it behaves like polynomial. It's, it, it has polynomial groups. Somehow if z goes to zero from the right half, uh, left half plane, it has exponential growth. And using this asymptotics, one can easily find the different asymptotics of this fundamental solution on the left and right half planes. In the end, by, comp by taking the ratios of these two, di uh, two different asymptotics, one can compute the Stokes matrix. So such a two by two matrix is given explicitly by the following formula. So this is basically, I go through, I mean, so I go through the definition of Stokes matrix in the first slide to this uh, restrict to this two by two case. So this is quite explicit. And in the end, one can see that a Stokes matrix depends on the most com complicated entry of Stokes matrix is given by gamma functions whose argument depends on the eigenvalues of res residue matrix. So this is a, an example. Any questions? Okay, if, if there is no questions, let's continue. So the first uh, theorem, uh, and then Philip, Philip Bolch proved, uh, it's, it's a theorem around 2000. It pro he proves that for any U, so here I, this, this, this denotes the regular Cartan elements, the real, real regular Cartan elements of GON, so which is a diagonal, which is a set of diagonal matrices with real and distinct eigenvalues. So for any U, the following map, which associates the Stokes matrices of the following equation to the, to the residue matrix A is actually a local analytic Poisson isomorphism. Here, let me explain this theorem in more details. Recall that, so this is this map, given any matrix A for any fixed U, then given any matrix A, then we can construct such a linear system whose residue matrix is A. Then we know that such a system has a pair of Stokes matrices, S plus and S minus. And on the other side, we know that the dual Poisson groups as a space is isomorphic to the space, to the, to the product of B minus and B plus fiber over H, where B, B minus is a set of lo lower triangular matrices. B plus is a set of up triangular matrices. Well, H is a space of diagonal matrices. Therefore, S plus lives inside, so we can, so S plus lives inside B, mi B plus, while S minus lives inside B minus. Therefore, this such a map is well defined. And then, I guess, uh, and then uh, Philip, and, and then Bolch proves that this map is uh, actually a Poisson isomorphism, where the left is equipped with a KKS or canonical linear Poisson structure, while the right is equipped with a dual Poisson structures. So this is a starting point of, of, of our interest in uh, Stokes phenomenon, try to understand this uh, remarkable theorem. Okay, any, any questions on this, on, on, on Philip Bolch's statement? Okay, in the following, I gonna give a quantum version of this, uh, of this theorem. For that, I should first, so the quantum theorem gonna be a, a, so roughly speaking, I gonna first introduce a quantum version of such a linear system, and then introduce the quantum Stokes matrices. And then I gonna use the quantum Stokes matrices to construct a, an isomorphism, an algebra isomorphism between quantum groups and the classical GON which is a quantum version of such a serial. So this is the first part. <clears throat> Sorry. 
So now I'm gonna introduce a, a linear system uh, with coefficients valued in non-commutative rings, which is a universal neural looping algebra. Recall that such algebra is generated by this elementary matrices with uh, commutator relations. So this IJ varies from one to N. So this is universal human looping algebra, sorry. <clears throat> and then I introduced such a uh, N by N matrix due to the killing form. So basically this is, this is given by the killing uh, trace form. So where this T is N by N matrix with entries inside UGON whose I's Call, uh, whose, I, whose ij element is given by eji. So this is the definition of t. And then for any u, recall that for any u, which is, a n by, which is certain n by n diagonal matrices with distinct real eigenvalues, we consider such a linear system. So this is linear system takes the same form as before, except that now the function fz is as a matrix, this matrix function is value is sorry, it's this matrix function has entrance inside U G O N H bar. So this so here I introduce a, an indeterminate H bar, then U G O N H bar is one can think of it's a formal power series in H bar uh, with coefficients inside the U G O N. Right. Here is uh Recall that this T is an by matrix whose entrance lives inside the UGON. And this dot product is given by multiplication of matrices. Well, when you multiply matrices, its entrance is inside the UGON. Therefore, you should also use a multi you, you, you should also use a product inside the UGON. So this is so so uh, F is a column vector of so F is uh, a column vector is, of size F n. Is a, F is a matrix. F itself is a matrix of what uh, <clears throat> doesn't, okay. Of what, so the, uh, what is the size? N by so n. the size of T is also N by N. Right. So basically okay. this is so, a N by N system whose uh -huh. coefficients lives inside these non-commutative rings. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, well, so although this is an infinite dimensional system, right? One can define its Stokes matrices just as the finite dimensional case. So if you like, you can think in this way. So uh, you can you can you can take a categorical viewpoint. For example, given any finite dimensional representation of GUN, then the evaluation of UGON on the representations gonna turn this linear system to a finite dimensional ODs, right? So that is a finite dimensional version from a category, categorical setting. Here I take a universal setting. So basically I consider this linear system <clears throat> Whose coefficients is inside UGON. And similarly, one can define the so called quantum Stokes matrices, which measure again the different asymptotics of any fundamental solutions of such a system. And now, instead of n by matrices, the quantum Stokes matrices are n by matrices with entries inside the UGON H bar. So, this is the only difference. So again, but but Shama, the the solution for F, so the entries for F, mm -hmm. um, so their dependence on H is just the power formal power series, right? Uh, uh probably okay. we don't that, see. A, mm -hmm. Not not uh not like Laurent series, but a formal power series, right? So, is that. Is that clear that that the dependence of f the entries of f on h is mm -hmm. just a formal power series, no negative powers? Mm -hmm. mm, right, I think so. Oh, okay.
Yeah, let's. So next slide is gonna give a two by two example from where you can see more uh, details. So let's see how to solve such a system in n equals two case. So in such a case, our system takes the following form. So where this this two by two matrix has entries e one one e two one. Sorry. Uh, so 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 this this guy should be e one two. So this is e two one e one two and e two two. So recall that f f is a two by two matrix whose entrance inside u g o u g o two. And to solve this system, so basically solving such a system is not very much different as before. So for that, first let's introduce. So the idea is uh, is, is same. We're gonna use Kummer function to write down a solution. But before that, let's introduce us roots, the eigenvalues of the quantum determinant of the residue matrix. So here, this degree two polynomial in C is a quantum determinant of this two by two matrix. So here I just write down this uh, uh, the polynomial. I'm gonna give the definition of quantum determinant in the next slide. But here, let's take it for granted. So this polynomial has a, has a, if we look at this, uh, this, uh, this polynomial, we will find out the coefficients of this polynomial commute with each other. So one can verify this, this coefficients E11 plus E22 commutes with the, this uh, E21, E12 minus E11 plus E22 terms. Therefore, their co coefficients commute. In other words, if we take uh, the roots, the two roots of such a polynomial in, in certain splitting extension of UGO2, then the two roots will also commute with each other. So basically we saw this uh, degree two polynomials pretending, pretending everything is uh, in C. And then since these two roots commute with each other, we can you know, define the formal power series without any dif uh, difficulty, right? Because in uh, a priori working inside this, working inside this non-community rings, we should be careful about orders. But somehow the, but somehow all this alpha beta in the end they commute with each other. Therefore, we can define the power power series just as, you know, in the complex field C. And then one can check that. This Kummer function again satisfies uh, the system. So this is a straightforward computation. And then using the asymptotics of this Kummer functions, we can compute the Stokes matrix as in the classical case. But here one should be careful because in the, in the, in, in the second entry of the Stokes matrix, this E21, for example, this E21 don't commute with others, with other you know, elements. So here we should always keep E21 ahead. Yeah. So the, so, so the C1, mm -hmm. C2, they are elements in the Cs, the two roots. They are mm -hmm. elements in where? In the, in the in are, UG? Uh, universal uh, enveloping be, algebra, right? Uh, to be more precise, they are not. But they are in. They live in some some field uh, uh, split extension. But somehow, if you if you look at it, if you look at because they are solutions of some polynomials, right? But if you look at yeah. this expression, this expression mm -hmm. is symmetric on cosine mm -hmm. two one and cosine two two. Therefore, in the end, therefore in the end, this expression indeed lives inside the UGO two H bar. Right. Um. Uh. I. I. Uh. Your. Okay. Now. Your. Uh, your notation. The. Abscript. The. The subscript. Only. You only have two there. So. Uh, so this. Oh, uh, sorry. Is this cosine one one should be. Sorry. Here. I. Here. I forgot. This cosine one one should be e one one. Yeah. It's. It's a. Here. I. Yeah. I made a mistake. This cosine one one is e one one, and this cosine one one is e one one. Yeah. Oh, but uh, what? But and what? But if you stick them into a gamma function, so where? I mean, then you divide them. So uh, where? 
the, the right, so the corner, the right upper corner should be an element in UG, right? In a universal mm. enveloping algebra. So, yeah, so or in UG H bar, I guess. UG H bar, yeah. But then the when you stick those elements into gamma, where do where are they? Uh, what are they? Uh, so the the denominator. Mm -hmm. Probably let's let's put it this way. So so let's think in a categorical in a categorical sense. So if you if you take any finite dimensional representations, then any of this e one one e two one will be certain matrices, right? Like in element of like like in uh, endomorphism v, where v is a representation. Then there's cos c two one and cos c two two are commute are commutative uh, are two commutative elements inside the endomorphism v. Where you can make sense of these gamma functions, right? Okay, so so they are invertible matrices then. Right. And, and then yeah, when you yeah. take the when you put them in the denominator. Then do you take the in, you put you multiply this inverse to from the left or from the right? It doesn't really matter. Yeah, from from the right, because e to one then the commute with the denominator. So therefore, I should put them on the right. If I put them on the left, this cos i to one will become cos i to one plus h bar, something like that. Yeah. But okay. here in in this slides, I I I only want to I, I want to illustrate how to solve such a system, you know, uh, using the roots of the quantum determinant, uh, quantum determinant. And the only thing, and, 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 and the important thing is that we can also use the Kummer functions as in the classical case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, this is, uh, this is, uh, so, so this is a so-called uh, quantum Stokes matrices. And uh, one example, and then I'm gonna give a relation between quantum Stokes matrices with quantum groups. So for that, let's recall what's a greenfield Jimbo quantum group. It's an associative algebra over, over uh, this uh, CH bar with unit and with generators given by this uh, in type A, given by this uh, diagonal and off diagonal matrices. So this is e, 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 I, F, I, and uh, H, I, with the following relations. So this first two relations. Uh, so the most important relation is, uh, is the third one, is the quantum cell relation. So, so if we look at, for example, this uh, E, I, square, E, J, and so on, we will find out as Q equals to one, it becomes a, you know, classical cell relations for the classical Lie algebra G O N. But we are here, we replace, we replace a coefficient two by the uh, hyperbolic function sinh two. So this is how we deform the cell relation. So this is a so-called quantum cell relation. So this is a most important relation in this quantum groups. As I said, as h bar goes to zero, though, or as q goes to one, this quantum cell relation becomes cell relation, and uh, this quantum group, as an algebra, recovers the universal even looping algebra. Here, I only consider the algebra structure of the quantum group. Okay, any questions on this quantum group? Okay, and then our first theorem states that for any U inside the real uh, regular carton, the following map gives a uh, algebra isomorphism from quantum groups to the undeformed universal Euler looping algebra. So such a map maps the generators of the quantum groups, maps this EIFI to the off diagonal elements of the quantum Stokes matrices. So recall that before I use this S plus minus IJ to denote the entries of the quantum Stokes matrices. 
in particular, this SI I plus one takes the I row and the I plus one's column entry of the quantum Stokes matrix. So this this is actually a, an algebra isomorphism. Right. So this is so this is a uh, this is a first theorem of this talk. And let's let's give a rough idea why this is a quantization of the Bolch's theorem. So roughly speaking, if we take the semi-classical limit of this of the above algebra isomorphism, we are gonna get uh, you know we're gonna uh, get the Bolch's we're gonna recall Bolch's theorem. So this is because if we take the a semi-classical limit of quantum groups, we're gonna get the we're gonna get the Poisson algebras on the dual Poisson group, G O N star. Well, if we take the classical limit of U G O N, we're gonna get a Poisson algebras on the uh, on the dual of Li algebra. So in this way, it gonna recovers. It gonna uh, when H bar goes to zero, it gonna uh, recovers both. Uh, exponential maps, which takes, which are associating the Stokes matrices of the following linear system to any A. So I, I, I will not give uh, full details of, of, of this uh, semi-classical limit and so on, but this is uh, the roughly ideas why this is a quantization of both results. And uh, yeah. So any questions on this theorem and uh, and it's and it's a relation with uh, both theorem. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the similar theorem uh, appeared in in the works of uh, Andrea Apple and Sachin Gautam. Uh, do you know the relation? Yeah, I gonna I gonna give a relation uh, in the second part. Okay. Great. So basically, this uh, so basically this space has a has a uh, has a so-called wonderful uh, compactification. So when you becomes when you goes to the uh, caterpillar point, this map will becomes one of the ampule called a uh, Gautam isomorphism. Yeah. So roughly speaking, for some special U, it will recover their isomorphism. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Right. It's a very good question. Now let's see how to you know, how to compute or how to write down an explicit isomorphism for some special U. So for that, I need to introduce some uh, more notations like the quantum determinant of the matrix of the Killing matrix T. So recall that T is an unbound matrix whose IJ whose entrant is EJI. And the so-called quantum determinant is given by the following formula. So uh, since T has, uh, since the entries of T are not commutative, therefore you should be careful to take the, you know, the determinant. So for example, you should fix, you should fix, uh, you should take the row or column expansion. So here I, I guess I take the column expansion. And beyond that, you should also consider this so-called complete shift. So it's, so it's not simply the, row expansion of the determinant, but you should consider this company shift. So let's see a two by two example. In this case, the quantum determinant of this two by two matrix is given by the following formula. So basically I plug in, I plug in this formula in n equals two case and get the expression. So this expression already appears in my talk, right? It's, it appears in the, uh, in, the, in the previous slides where I, compute, I computed the Stokes matrices in two by two case. So this is a general definition. And the well-known fact is that, so recall that when I talked about this two by two case, I, 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 I said that the coefficient of this quantum determinant commute with each other. And this is a, a well-known fact. Actually for any K, 
for any k, the coefficients of this principal quantum minor commutes with each other. And if you collect all these coefficients for all the k, they generate a maximal commutative subalgebras, the so-called Gorfan Chatelin subalgebras of UG of UGON. And furthermore, we can furthermore here we denote by cosy k1 up to cosy kk as the roots of this quantum principle minors. And then all these roots they commute. As before, these roots may not live inside the UGON, but live inside some split extension. Yeah, any questions on this uh, notations? Okay, so I'm gonna use this roots to write down the explicit formula for the, uh, for the quantum Ginzburg Weinstein maps for some special U. So the idea is as follows. So in general, the, quant the definition of a Stokes matrix is depends on this uh, regular cutdown element. But somehow it's it's quite hard to compute. I and I guess people even don't know if their entries are new special functions or not. But somehow the definition of Stokes matrices can be extended from this regular carton to its wonderful compactification. All this space is isomorphic to probably up to some PSL2 action, isomorphic to the space of real stable rational curves. So this is basically real points of the Dalin Mumford space. And in particular, on this compacti compactification. So this compactification is stratified by some lower dimensional uh, space. And then there is a and then there are some caterpillar points, the so-called caterpillar points in the zero dimensional stratum. And if we take one of the caterpillar points. So we should, we should think of the caterpillar point is given by letting un, uh, uh, given by letting u1 much less than u2 and much less than u3 and so on. So basically this is a limiting point. Then the corresponding quantum Stokes matrix can be computed explicitly. And the explicit formula is given as follows. So basically here I take, I compute the quantum Stokes matrix at a limit point, roughly speaking. Then the quantum Stokes matrix SI, I plus one, the special entries, all this dream field isomorphism, all this algebra isomorphism given by Stokes matrices takes the following form. So it maps any generators, for example, this generator is EK to some expression given by gamma function. Again, this expression is symmetric with respect to all this uh, CK I. Therefore, it's, therefore, the coefficient is valued inside U0 and H bar. And there is some other term, this AKJ term. And this AKJ it's given by it's given by some quantum minor of the matrix T. So this is so AKJ is given by some polynomial combinations of all the EIJ elements. Shaman, mm -hmm. I'm slightly worried by the fact that now this E is on the right, and in the example we had before, it was on the left. Should 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 one worry about it, or it just a matter of notation, or? Yeah, this is what I said because this e, this 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 AKJ, they commute with all the cosy, cosy IJ when I is not equal to J a K. But somehow, if I equals to K, for example, this AJK, if we move a, AKJ from from the from the from the right of cosy KJ to the left, we have to pass this cosy KJ by by H bar. Okay. So they, they, they have some, they are sort of double coordinates on this quantum group, uh, on this uh, universal union looping algebra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. But, you know, but, but in the end, this, this expression, you know, if you, if you look at this expression, most complicated part is given by this gamma function. 
and it only depends linearly on this AJK. Therefore, you can easily handle, I mean, easily to put AJK to the left, to the ahead or behind this expression. So this is, a, yeah, this is something uh, easily to, you know, to handle. So, right. so Xiaomeng, the, 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 the product in the denominator, the gamma function, so once again, um, so what- They, they, they commute because, 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 you know, uh, because all the coefficients of quantum uh, minors, they commute with each other. Therefore, the roots commute with each other. So all the ki, mm -hmm. they commute with each other, each other. Therefore, there is no problem to write on such a expression. And furthermore, this expression is symmetric mm -hmm. with respect to cases. Therefore, they live inside the UGLN. A priori, they are, they are not, right, right? Because they are solutions of polynomials in some, in some ring. A priori, mm -hmm. they, they live inside some uh, split extension, but, but in the end, it's okay. But in any case, if we, if we take the categorical wheel point, this is a bunch of, com all these cases are commute, uh, are, um, are commute uh, our matrices commute with each other. You should, mm -hmm. then you can think of they are simply as complex numbers. So all the computations, you know, all the expressions work, uh, go through, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right, and this computation is given by the, uh, is, is given by studying the asymptotics of confluent hypergeometric functions because uh, recall that the Stokes matrices are about the study of complex functions at essential at, at essential poles, and in particular, the quantum Stokes matrix at the caterpillar point is about the study of asymptotics of confluent hypergeometric functions. And on the other side, as we already uh, heard just a moment ago, uh, Ampere and Gautam, they also construct. Uh, explicit isomorphism between these two algebras using the language of uh, young genes. And uh, these two formulas basically the co uh, the coincide. So basically we give a com complex analysis interpretation of their formula. Right. So this is a, this is a one explicit example of quantum Stokes matrix at the caterpillar point. Any questions? Okay, if there is no more questions, I'm gonna, I gonna uh, discuss uh, briefly its relation with representation theory. And uh, since we, now we have explicit I algebra isomorphism from quantum group to, to the classical algebra, Lie algebra. And, uh, you know, from analysis to algebras, we already seen that the asymptotics of Kummer or generalized Kummer functions produce some explicit algebra isomorphism. And uh, on the one hand, the explicit formula shows that the Stokes matrices at this special caterpillar point is related to Gurfan Satin algebra or basis. I gonna recall what's a Gurfan Satin basis later on in the next slide. So this is basically seen from the explicit formula. But somehow the Gurfan Satin algebra or basis has a nice uh, fam has a, a family of deformation parametrized by same space, the compactified uh, regular Cartan space. So the so-called eigenvalues of shift of arguments algebras. So now recall that the quantum Stokes matrices, they are parametrized by the compactified space or compactification of regular Cartan. Therefore, we have a family of maximal subalgebras of UGON parametrized by same space. So it's nature to try to understand the asymptotics of more general special functions appearing in the Stokes matrices at a, at a generic U from the representation theoretical terms. Basically, 
try to understand the spectral functions uh, appeared for general U using the using the family of definition of the Grofman Italian algebras. So this is a, a basic idea. I don't know if I have enough time to, to state this, but let me try. So the third part is a brief discussion between Stokes phenomena and the uh, uh, canonical basis in representation theory. So except the motivation in the previous slides, here I give another motivation for those who know the work of Anton and his uh, student Irina on the tropicalization of Poisson brackets. Right, uh, because I'm short of time, so probably I'm gonna skip this formula. So there is another uh, motivation from uh, tropicalization of Poisson brackets motivates the following story. So on the one hand, so next I'm gonna talk about relation between Stokes phenomena and uh, uh, warriors of basis in representation theory. So this basis is uh, Gorfan's heading basis and the canonical basis. First, let's recall what are the Gorfan's heading basis in representations of GON. So recall that any irreducibles of GON is given, is parameterized by a collection of numbers whose difference are, are non-negative integers. So the lambda n is the highest weight. And then the theorem of Gorfan setting says that the restriction of GUN to a subalgebra GUN minus one, here I, here I think of GUN minus one as the left top, N minus one by N minus one submatrix of GUN. Then the restriction of this highest weight representation is isomorphic to the direct sum of the irreducibles of GUN minus one, where the summation is over the highest weight of G n minus one, which satisfies the following interlacing relation of between its conditions. So this lambda n minus one is simply a highest weight of G n minus one. Therefore, it includes n minus one numbers. So these numbers are labeled by lambda n minus one one up to n minus one. And if we so this is a restriction of GUN to GUN minus one. If we continue this procedure, for example, if we restrict each of this uh, lambda prime, L prime lambda N minus one to a subalgebra GUN minus two, we can continue this procedure. And a recursively, a chain of subalgebras of GUN gonna produce a basis in this highest weight representation because if we continue this procedure in the end, we're gonna get the representations of highest, uh, we're gonna get irreducibles of G01, which by sure is lemma is one dimension. Therefore, we're gonna get basis inside this, uh, inside this A lambda, par parameterized by the girlfriend setting patterns, which is a collection of numbers, n times, n minus one times n over two numbers satisfying the following interlacing relations. So this is basically what the theorem tells us. It produces, this theorem basically produces a canonical basis or, or the so-called Gorfman setting basis of any irreducibles of GUN. So any questions on this basis? And on the other, on the other side, on any irreducibles, we have the canonical basis. So for that, we should recall what are the PPW basis because I'm short of time. So I, I simply give an example of what are the PPW basis in three by... Oh, let's, quick, let's give a quick review. So recall what are the PPW basis, for example, for GON case. So these are, these, are, these are given by a certain preferred orders of the uh, root vectors. But in the definition of quantum groups, we only have the, uh, the generators are given by E1 to EN, which are the simple roots, which we should think, think of simple roots. And uh, Lustig introduced certain operators to produce the, all the root 
vectors from the simple ones. And using these operators, one can define, for example, one can define, uh, one can define the analog of uh, roots, roots vectors for GUN for the quantum groups. And then the PPW basis are simply, you know, a preferred orders, roughly speaking, a preferred orders of, of the root vectors. So this is a PPW of the quantum group groups or the positive part of quantum, quantum groups. Here, where this U plus is a sub-algebra of quantum groups generated by EIs. So this is a PPW basis. And uh, one can see that as Q equals to one, the quantum groups becomes a classical universal inward looping algebras. The PBW basis becomes a PBW basis of the classical ones. And now the idea is, is that we want to understand. So recall that we construct an algebra homomorphism or isomorphism from the quantum group to the undeformed one in particular on the positive part, it's given by, it maps any generator EI to the off diagonal elements of quantum groups. Now we want to understand what's the image of the PBW basis under this maps, under this, uh, under this algebra homomorphism. Or in the representation terms, if we take any lowest vector of a irreducible, we want to understand What's the image of the uh, PPW basis? Sorry, here I, I forgot to write. So this is an element inside U of G O N H bar, and I should let this element X on C, the lowest vector. Then I get another vector in the irreducibles. So basically, I want to understand what's the images of PPW basis under this. Uh, quantum Stokes maps. So here I give a three by three. What example. is this, uh, sorry, Sharma, what is this uh, bold face B? Which basis is that? PBW. The bold face B. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I, so in three by three case, the PBW basis is, is, is as follows. So this E1 and the E2 are, sorry. So one should really think of this E1 as uh, this E1 is, you know, in three by three case, this E1, if we label the generators using I, using the row and the columns, this E1 is sort of the elements inside the first row and the second column, and the E2 is inside the second, the second row and the third column. And the, the element in the middle, E2, E1 minus Q times E1, E2 are elements inside the first row and the third, third column. And under this preferred order, this is a PBW basis. And if we compute the image of this, of the, of the generators E1 and E2 under this quantum Stokes matrix map, we will find that the following expression, we will find the following expression. Here I use uh, uh, symptotics of gamma functions. So this is something one can uh, compute. Yeah. So this is a, this is a one example of how the PBW basis looks like under the under the uh, under the under the maps of quantum Stokes matrices. But here I take the I take the co uh, Q leading terms of the images of PBW basis. For those who know the P, uh, canonical basis, knows that the canonical basis is a sort of Q leading terms of PBW basis. So this is why I take the Q leading terms of the image. So in this way, I can compare the canonical base, I can compute the image of the canonical basis. Right, and in the last four minutes, I mentioned, I mentioned uh, one conjecture. <clears throat> Which relates, sort of, uh, which relates the canonical basis on the quantum group side, and the eigen basis of shift of arguments, on the universal neural looping algebra side. 
So as I mentioned, there is a family of com uh, maximal commutative subalgebras of the universal inward looping algebras called the shift of argument subalgebras, parametrized by the compact compactification of regular Cartan space. And uh, in particular, if we take the real points of the compactified space, then any highest weight, any irreducibles of GUN will have simple spectrum and this shift of argument algebras AU. Therefore, we have a decomposition of V lambda. So here I use V lambda to denote the highest weight representation of GUN. Therefore, we have a decomposition of V lambda into eigenlines and the shift of argument algebras. So in particular, when U is a caterpillar point, recall that it's a special point in the zero dimensional stratum. In particular, when U is a caterpillar point, this eigenlines becomes a Gorfan setting basis following the work of Fink and Franco, Ribnikov, and so on. In other words, recall that I introduced the Gorfan setting basis in the previous slides. And this slide says that there is a family of deformations of the Gorfan setting basis by the eigenlines of shift of argument algebras. And then the conjecture says that actually the quantum Stokes matrices or equivalently the isomorphism from the quantum groups to the universal inward looping algebras for any U relate the canonical basis to this eigenbasis. The formulation of the conjecture is as follows. So for any highest, for any irreducibles of GUN with the lowest vector, we consider the following set. So this is basically the image of the PBW basis under the quantum Stokes matrix map. Then as what Kashiwara and Lustig did in the canonical basis, we consider the Q leading part of this subset in, in the way that as, uh, as what Kashiwara did. So consider the, lo uh, localized, the local, localized polynomial ring and then consider the, the sub-module over this ring. And then we consider the C basis of the quotient of this sub-module over the Q times this sub-module. Then the image of the PBW basis, or sorry, or then the image of this subset and this quotient kind of gives us a subset of the quotient space. And then we conjecture that this subspace is canonically isomorphic, isomorphic to the eigenbasis of the shift of argument algebras of, uh, of AU. So this is, this, is a, this is a formulation of the conjecture which states how the quantum Stokes matrices relates the canonical basis to the eigenbasis of shift of argument algebras. So, so this is, so, so this algebraic, sorry. This conjecture is clo closely related to WKB approximation of Stokes matrices in progress with Anton. Sorry. Yeah, I think this is all my talk. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thanks, Xiaoming, for, for mm -hmm. the very nice talk. Um, any questions? I think I think it was very, uh, lots of chat, chat messages there. Uh, oh, any I questions like you want to ask? Yeah. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, so uh, the question is, uh, so in fact, there is a twist element 
mm-hmm. which could relate the two co-products now, now that you have uh, mm-hmm. an algebra isomorphism. And so it was mm-hmm. a Dima Reutenberg's Re- 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 question during the lecture. So whether the two co-products are uh, related. And so I said that no, because one is uh, co-commutative and the other not. But uh, what, wha- what one knows is they are related by some conjugation and some twist element. And so uh, would there be a possibility to uh, make uh, this twist element explicit uh, um, mm-hmm. using uh, Stokes? Right. Uh, you know, the, 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 the thing is that the Stokes, the Stokes, the story on Stokes matrices, as, as we've seen are about the study of uh, transcendental functions. And the thing is that, and the thing is that I think people don't know how to compute Stokes matrices beyond the two by two case. And the whole story based on the fact that if we let you go to the caterpillar point, everything is explicit. And I guess in that case, uh, I didn't do the computation, but I, I guess in that case, in that case, when you is a caterpillar point, one can, one may get the expression of the twist. Yeah. Close my video. When you is a, I didn't get you. So when you is a caterpillar yeah. point. Mm-hmm. So when, when you is a caterpillar point, Yeah, probably when U is a caterpillar point, one can get the expression of the twist, which kills the mm-hmm. kills the mm-hmm. associator. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah, because mm-hmm. because you know the twist, the twist and the amet- uh, as as you know here, this isomorphism is basically given by the amatrices. It's given by the amatrix. It's an mm-hmm. equivalent data, and the amatrix is is explicit, and the amatrix and the and the twist. They only differed by some some things in the Cartan part, and I think, yeah, mm-hmm. and I think here one can compute it. Mm-hmm. So because right. it, using, mm-hmm. uh, so it would be a, a matter of investigating the the behavior of your construction with respect to co- co-products on both sides, and uh, so so probably uh, some things should be could be done, but. Okay, since you work in such a, a nice uh, algebraic formalism, and uh, these algebras also have coproducts, so in fact, uh, a priori, you you have a, a possibility of investigating that. So, but uh, it's just mm-hmm. an impression. Right. Right. I'm sorry. So is that, it... that the quantum version of uh, 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 um, uh, uh, um, quantum version of uh, um, what is it? Um, Kampau hostel. So to relate and to write down the group product in terms of Lie algebra. Mm, I, that I don't know. I probably it's not. Uh, I mean, that is not quite, yeah, related really to, to, to this, uh, to this talk, I, I mean, to this formula. Yeah, I don't know. Right. So, Xiaomang, the, um, this Junfeld mm-hmm. isomorphism, this quantum, this Junfeld isomorphism, is this, so your theorem is only for GLN or is for uh, an arbitrary G? Mm. I, right, so so the proof of this of, of this theorem is not is not hard. It involves a computation of it involves a computation of Stokes matrices of some explicit linear system, and uh, and uh, that I can compute for probably for uh, type A B C D for the classical Lie algebras, but for E F G I don't know because yeah. So it depends. You but, but you take is, some like a vector representation, or you compute it there, yeah, or yeah, right. But the thing is that I cannot get the explicit formula, as in type A case, because in that case, in type A case, when you go to the caterpillar point, the computation is is, is doable because, uh, uh, because some analysis, 
a reason. But for the ABC, for the classical Lie algebras, I cannot get an explicit formula such as explicit as it is. But, but probably it's possible because, you know, people like Molev, they constructed the uh, uh, Gorfan setting basis for type C or BCD uh, Lie algebras. And I didn't mention, but this, but this isomorphism actually maps the Gorfan setting basis of the quantum groups to the Gorfan setting basis of the uh, UGON. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know for the other types, this explicit formula should be related to the representation of young genes. Yeah, but I, but yeah, but one can imagine there are some new special functions appears in, in, in the formula, which replace the gamma functions. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there, are there any, any other questions from? Hi, yes, I have one question. Uh, so uh, it's a bit vague, but the theorem that you were just showing, uh, do you know if there is an analytic you know, thing behind it, having in mind that the universal enveloping can be seen, for example, as distributions on the group and so on? Uh, the, the, yeah. Um, the, Mm. Could it be that they are, it's, a, it's an isomorphism based on having different symbols for a certain operate or certain distributions or something like this? Uh, that, mm, that, I, that I don't, because, you know, this, 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 all this theory relates on, uh, uh, depends on, relies on the Stokes matrix of this quite explicit linear system. Here I don't see I, I don't think of U G L N as some distribution. I don't take the duo. I don't take the duo of the of U G L N that I don't. But it's likely you know quantum groups has different realizations. For example, one can use a certain Hall Ringel Hall algebras to 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 realize stocks uh, to realize quantum groups or half of quantum groups. And I guess there this S I I plus one. Because that this theorem really, what's, what this theorem says is that this SI I plus one satisfies the quantum cell relation, which means that this SI I plus one satisfies some algebraic relations with hyperbolic functions. That is exactly the of course the quantum group relations, but um, but there may be possible to think of this SI I plus one as some. Um, objects in some categories. They are symbols of, of some like query representations and so on. There may be a con categorical categorification of this story, but, but, I, but I, I don't know if there is, as you said, uh, think of them as uh, distributions and so on. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any other questions? Um, okay, so uh, if not, shall we just uh, end the meeting? Or do people okay. still chat afterwards or? I think we can officially end the meeting if, if still if people still want to chat. <laughs>